This idea had been discussed a little bit earlier on Sportsnet, but it's one that I think is so intriguing because it's a completely separate element to the entire Patrick Line trade situation that we have been keeping up with on this YouTube channel, we've been making videos about, and that has just been igniting different discussions throughout the media, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on the TVs and the radios as well. So, let's talk about Patrick Line once more, but in a different kind of context, because Paul Stastny was the most recent trade acquisition by the Winnipeg Jets that everybody can kind of look at and say, yes, that was a very nice acquisition. Paul Stastny was a guy who was acquired by the Jets to play on the second line alongside of Patrick Laine. And to an extent, rekindle Patrick Laine's overall desire to play in Winnipeg. We've noted this over the past few months, but... Line a and the Winnipeg Jets, there's been a little bit of a tension there that people have been trying to uncover and unravel and actually define via words, but it can pretty much be summed up with a few basic ideas here. Patrick Line is a really good player. Patrick Line wants to get good ice time. Patrick Line wants to play with some good players too. But as a second line guy, or a third line guy, I guess you could say, playing with players who are not Blake Wheeler, Mark Shifley, etc., not those guys. He was in a position where people were like, yeah, you know, I can totally understand why he would be upset. I would be upset too if I was a star player being played in the middle six, not really given an opportunity to shine like star players can. So Paul Stastny was an acquisition who was a former Winnipeg Jet in the past, who did play with Patrick Lyonet all those years ago. It wasn't actually all those years ago. It was just like two years ago. I was back in high school when this happened. But Stastny and Lyonet were very, very good together. So as a result, what you're doing here with a trade like this is you're bringing a guy who can play well with Lyonet to play with Patrick Lyonet to make Patrick Lyonet look at your team and say, yes, this is a place that I want to stay because his contract is expiring. He is going to have arbitration rights. He is going to have all the cards on his table when he decides on a new deal. And the Paul Stasny acquisition was seen by many as the combating move to what we have been seeing throughout other media outlets. We saw a Finnish media outlet post an article in Finnish talking about how Patrick Laine, via a trade or via free agency, is inevitably going to leave Winnipeg, no questions asked. Because there was a whole bunch of other stuff that was leaked. Apparently, the agents and the Patrick Laine party came out and said that a trade would be mutually beneficial for both sides because Laine would get an opportunity elsewhere where the top line isn't already pre-established and it's not already set in stone as the top line and so many people thought that this Stasny thing would have been the idea that combated that and said okay if Patrick Laine is not playing first line minutes at least he's playing with Stasny at least he is becoming good again with a guy who is very good and Paul Stasny too right well, this TV piece over here on Sportsnet, done by Carolyn Cameron and Sean Reynolds, goes over a little bit of a different perspective. This is an olive branch. And if you go over to the link in the description, I'll leave a link down in the description to the video. It actually goes over. It's a two-minute long video. Go ahead and watch it. It's some nice analysis from Sean Reynolds. And I'll also leave a link in the description to the Hockey Writer's recent article, their NHL rumor section from November 9th, because this article goes over what exactly is said in the Sportsnet video, but it's written in text form, so I can screenshot it, put it on the screen for you all to follow along on the video in a very nice and fluid way. So, Sean Reynolds opens up the hit by talking about the Paul Stasny situation where they traded for Stasny. It's the same kind of stuff we spoke about over here. The fact is, Stasny is good. Line is going to be playing with a good player. Line is a guy who has been improving year after year. Okay, there was that one down year. We're not going to talk about that. But for the most part, everybody kind of knows Line is really good. He's got the best years ahead of him. And if a Paul Stasny is on the team, he has a lot more of a higher likelihood of achieving that number one superstar status sooner rather than later if it's something that he hasn't even hit already. But Sean Reynolds goes the opposite direction and he says, you know, at the end of the day, there's still the possibility that you don't convince Line a to stay. You don't convince Patrick Line a that this is the right fit for him going forward. You don't convince him that this is the team that will be his best overall home into the long-term future. And that's a possibility that does exist. So, what you're doing here with a Paul Stasny trade where you acquire this guy is not just giving Patrick Laine an overall incentive to stay, but it's giving other teams an incentive to feast their eyes on what Patrick Laine could do a little bit more. Here's what Reynolds says on the program if he wants to leave town. I don't think this Paul Stasny trade changes that. 
But what it does do for Winnipeg is if you bring in a guy like Paul Stasny, whom Line A has had success with in the past, and they can rekindle that success, then it just makes Patrick Line that much more valuable on the trade market. Because let's say Patrick Line plays a full season as a second line guy with Paul Stasny. Answer me this question. Do you think that Patrick Laine would have more or fewer points than if he was playing with an Adam Lowry, for example, in the same second line role? Yeah, duh, you're getting more points if you're playing with Stasny. That's just kind of how it goes, bud. So the other perspective of this Paul Stasny trade is that you're using it to make Patrick Laine's overall trade value a lot more amplified. Because Line A playing with Stasny is a lot better than Line A playing with Lowry. And Line A playing with Stasny could potentially get 35, 40 goals. Who knows? What's the ceiling on that? I have no idea. So, if Patrick Line is in a position where the negotiations are going tough, he's got all the cards in his ballpark, and he's refusing to budge, he's expecting a very high number, a number that is so high that the Jets can't even comprehend trying to do it, they can just be like, okay, well, you got 45 goals in the previous season. It's not going to be hard to trade you. Let's get it done, boy. And you're getting more value, a lot more value out of that guy than the guy who suited up for 82 games with Adam Lowry as his center instead. That's just kind of how it goes. Sorry, Adam Lowry, but Paul Stasny is a better playmaking forward, I would say. And that's that. You know, it's a certainly weird perspective to go ahead with, but it is one that in theory makes the most sense over here, because we have seen these superstars get traded out here in NHL trades. It rarely happens where a superstar actually gets moved, but when it does, it usually comes at the tail end of a contract or two. We saw Eric Carlson as a guy who many people deemed unmovable a few years ago, but in the last year of his contract, he ended up getting sent away for a deal that a lot of people said was a little bit of an underpayment. Now, in hindsight, with that first-round pick becoming Tim Stutzla, I guess you could say no way that was not an underpayment. It was actually a huge overpayment for Eric Carlson, especially considering what Carlson is today on the San Jose Sharks side of things. But at the end of the day, if the Jets are in a position where they're needing to trade Line a because the guy doesn't want to come back, it would be easier to go ahead and do that. The Jets camp was so adamant this entire time that they don't want to make a Patrick Line trade that will not improve their team. And if you're in a spot where Patrick Line just won't fulfill whatever it is that you're asking for him out of a contract negotiation, then, hey, you have no choice. You can trade away the guy, get some assets back. Sure, you could probably demand not as much as you would have if he's locked up, but something is better than nothing, right? It's better than losing him over and just letting him go away for nothing because, hey, you would be really wasting your assets if you did that. So talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea here because I certainly do like the 3D kind of chess style that is being implemented in this kind of move where you acquire a Paul Stastny. One, because, hey, you know, he makes your team better and it would increase the likelihood that Patrick Laine enjoys his time in Winnipeg to the extent that he wants to stay. But B, if you're not able to get that first part done, then my gosh, you can trade away a Patrick Laine because he has got a ton more value than if you hadn't made that Stastny trade in the first place. So, an olive branch indeed. Talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll show us 99. And, bye. <laughs>